Now, I'm going to be showing you this fly here. Now, it's basically a Merle and Mayfly. And this colour combination is uh, a fly of my own. They basically called them a Fail Mayfly. Now, this is tied mainly or close to the original with the pheasant and the tail, which you can use. You could use many fibres on the tail. Uh, this is the one I'm going to be tying. The tail of this is Badger. It's basically dyed olive. Uh, body's much the same. The fluorescent rib, it's got a wee red tag on this one though, which can work extremely well and worth, it's worth having a few tied with that. And then the dyed olive deer here. Now, this fly can be, because of the style, it can actually be pulled and it will cause a good wake, as well as fished as a static or just a natural drifting dry fly once, just kink it up. So it's very useful, as I said, that this one's slightly lighter. Uh, you can go a stage further, you can make the spinner. Much the same, it's the same wing. Difference is what I've done here is I've brought over a bit of antron to flatten it. Uh, so there's many variations and very, it's up to yourself, you can try it, but uh, this, this is certainly a fly worth putting in your box. Thread, I'm going to be using a uni thread and chartreuse. The hook's an all purpose dry fly hook. This one's by Full and Mill, so I'm just going to run it down. For the, to represent now, to form the tag, I'm using a uh, Crystal flash and red. Catch you on the side and the way down. Much easier to do that. Just run the thread to the point where it's just starting to get around the bend. Get another couple of turns yet, sorry. There we are. And then wind down. Probably about two mil or so. You have to protect this, so I just put a wee touch of super glue. And then wind over the top of the super glue. And wind up. It's a wee bit too much there, so I just turn it away with the tip of my finger. And then tie it off. Turn that length of the body. See, the tail's dyed badger. Just looking for. You can exaggerate, it's best always to put three or four on or more. You can always take them off if you think there's too many. You can't add them on, so they weren't the olive tips of the, the badger as you can see there. So I'm just going to look at them, line them up, take away any broken ones. So I've got four there, five there, that'll do. Five is fine. It's a five tailed mayfly, so the fish can't count. Well, I don't think they can anyway. So just make sure they're all lined up. You could stack them if you wish. If you haven't got the badger, I say you could use dyed olive, grey squirrel. You could use bucktail. It's up to yourself. So a couple of turns there on the top, tie it in. The length, at least the length, and a so the length of the hook. A wee touch more. Now what I'm going to do is separate these by just a figure eight through, and the figure eight through to near side. Do the far side, leave the center one. This will spread the fibers. Obviously, spread the weight of the fly. See how it looks. Have a center one here. Just position it at this most point. There you go. It's fine. Trim the length of the body, which is there. Then tidy up. Just take the thread up. Tying in the tail fibres and the way down, I'm going to tie in the floss for the rib. The floss I'm using, this is a uni floss and chartreuse. Now it's too thick as a single strand, so what I do is I, I split it. it. Gives you a thin, much easier to use. So all you do is, if you untwist it slightly, it will come apart. It's quite easy enough. Happy with the length, take it off. Tie it on the way down, as I say. Just catch it on the side, pull it to the tip. Nice and tight. Basically tying it so it's on the side of the hook. When it gets to the tail, just there. Now the body could be dyed olive, seal's fur, 
It's the SLF. It could be your favourite dubbing. Anything that's close to the colour. Now I'm using seals for. Slightly dub it onto the thread. Show you enough on it. What a nice tapered body in this fly. So slide it up. And then we work our way up. Nice and tight. And then getting that taper in the body. Just coming over your last turn slightly and building it up. There we are. Bring the rib up through. We spin the force one way, tightens it up, stops it spreading out, keeps it nice and tight. And then we're looking. I would say four to five turns anyway up the body. Cross your thread nice and tight. Throw away the waist. Got to wax on my thread. Just check your body at this point. Just going to trim away any excess just to get it, keep the shape in the body itself. Oops, using my curved scissors. Straight scissors are easier in this case. That'll do it. Now for the wing, first thing I'm going to show you the natural colour of the deer hair I'm using. And this came from the same patch, they were the same skin. This is from the belly, you see a way lighter, much lighter. And this is from the ridge in the back, the darker part. So, but what I've done is I've dyed them all of. So, here we are. It's a light patch. And this is the, the dark patch. I use the light patch first. Grab the tips. It's going to be the shorter part of the wing, meaning it's going to be. I'll show you. It's just to help lift to keep the wing up, so you must tie this in shorter. Tips towards the back of the hook, tied from this point. So there we are. This is going to be our, our head towards our head. Just come round a couple of turns, tighten up, just run the thread through it, like you would do a muddler head. What I'm going to do here is bring it down either side. You see I'm always keeping the hold of the wing. At this point when I've got it split evenly I can then come in the thread. Now you could trim away or cut away some of these ends here in the top. You don't want them into the wing so you just can take them out at this point. You see I'm just breaking them off so the reason I can do that is because I've waxed the thread and it's nice and tight. There we are. Now, the darker part of the wing, which is going to be practically twice the length of that. So again, we bring it out. I'm thinking of the head size to enough deer hair, enough for the wing. We want this natural curve, the fibre coming up and away. So there's twice the length. Just hold that, hold the wing, keep it on top. Come round with a couple of turns, loose. Tighten down and then just wind the thread through the cut ends, keeping hold of the wing, always nice and tight. Draw it back, make sure you leave, leave enough room for your thread to get in at the, the head, at the eye. That secures it in nice and tight. I've always kept the thread tight, I've never let it go, so let finish. Try the thread. We quite look see how things are set. It looks okay. And then curved scissors. Just form a muddler head. Just come in. Just using the curve of the scissors and the angle of the head of the fly. Just trim it. All the way around. It's a great wee fly, it's a good style, it's certainly worth doing. And trim it so it's, you can see the body. Just take your time. These cut ends, just you can bring them out and trim them away. Or you can leave them, you don't have to trim them away. Fish will not mind them. Just going to catch them with the scissors. There we are. 
There's a couple still in there, but they're okay. And that's it. Now that works extremely well for like pulling, as I say, and just for fishing as a normal dry fly. If you're into, if you fish the mayfly, you'll see the use of this fly. And you'll see the potential for it anyway. Nice and tight. And then all we have to do, go to varnish, stab it on. Make sure it soaks in, I'm using it, it's quite light. 